Hi there. In this video, I'm going to look into gears and how you can use them to increase the strength of grabbers and lifts. The Lego motors are quite fast, but they don't have a lot of torque or rotational force. Lifts and grabbers need to be strong, but not fast. So you can use gears to match the motors to the lifts or grabbers. I'm going to make two versions of the same lift, one with the gears increasing the torque and one with the gears increasing the speed and compare the performance of the two. I'll then move on and have a look at how you can use gears to improve the strength of a grabber. Okay, let's start with a look at the gears available in the Spike Prime kit. These are the four basic gears. Each can mesh with two other gears as shown. Spike Prime gears of the same size don't mesh together, but there are other LEGO gears which do. Here we see the other gear parts included with Spike Prime. The main reason for using gears is to match the speed and strength of a motor to the requirements of the load. This gear ratio will reduce the speed by a factor of 3 and increase the strength or torque by the same factor. If we swap the gears, we rotate the load three times faster but have only one third of the torque. There are situations where you could use gears to increase speed, but more importantly, Reducing speed gives you the strength you need for grabbers and lifts. To demonstrate this, I have made two versions of a lift mechanism I often use on robots. The lift is driven symmetrically on the left and right sides. The good version uses gears to reduce speed and increase the lifting strength. The bad version does the opposite. Good lift first drives 28 tooth gears from both sides of the motor, which mesh with 36 tooth gears. On the same axle are gears with 12 teeth, meshing at right angles with gears with 20 teeth. These in turn drive gears with 12 teeth, connecting to the linear racks which have 22 teeth spread over 7 cm. Here just the gears are shown. In two positions we have a gear driving a larger gear which reduces the speed and increases the torque. Finally, a 12 tooth gear drives the rack. The end result is that the motor has to turn 3.93 times to move the lift 7 cm. Bad lift has large gears driving smaller gears, which increases speed and reduces torque. Looking at the gears alone, in two positions we have a gear driving a smaller gear, increasing the speed and reducing the torque. Finally, a 28 tooth gear drives the rack. The end result is that the motor only has to complete 0.2 of a turn to move the lift 7 cm. Now let's look at how the two lifts perform. First good lift, programmed to raise and lower the lift at 100% speed with a half second weight at each position. The red trace shows the actual motor speed at about plus 90, 0 and minus 90. The green trace shows the motor position changing from 0 to about 1400 degrees which corresponds to the 3.2 motor turns. If we now put a load of 70 grams on the lift, the performance remains the same. Even with a load of 140 grams, we don't notice a difference. Let's do the same for bad lift. The actual motor speed only reaches 35 to 40 percent when moving the lift. The motor position only changes by about 70 degrees, corresponding to 0.2 of a revolution. With a load of 70 grams, the motor can only reach 15% speed when raising the lift and turns only about 50 degrees, so it cannot move the full 7 cm. With a load of 140 grams, the motor can only move a few degrees and is completely overloaded. For lifts, getting the gear ratio right makes the difference between success and failure. Now let's move on to grabbers. This grabber is mounted on the good lift which has enough strength to raise and lower the grabber together with the load. The grabber and lift were used for WRO Senior 2024. The lowest block is held by the floating rubber grippers, which rotate to align with the block. The left and right grabber arms hold the upper blocks in place. Each side of the motor drives one grabber arm through gears to increase the torque and give a strong grip. There is not much room to add gears, but this arrangement has two combinations of 12 and 20 tooth gears for each grabber arm. This gives a torque increase of 2.8, 
and of course a speed reduction by the same factor. Here is an overview of the gears fitted between each side of the motor and the grabber arms to give the torque increase. With this grabber and lift, the house element blocks in WRO 2024 can be easily lifted, moved around and placed as required for the various tasks. Well that's enough about hardware. I will now have a quick look at some programming tips for lifts and grabbers. It is useful to have a simple method of moving grabbers and lifts for testing or returning to a reference position. I make programs which move a few degrees in each direction when the hub, left or right keys are pressed. The number of degrees to move will depend on your grabber and lift. At the start of a program, I like to set the lift and grabber motors to position zero. I make sure the lift is fully down and the grabber closed so that I have a well-defined starting position. One way to save time is to operate the lift and grabber while the robot is moving around. To do this, you will need to use broadcasts, which are small programs running parallel to the main program. I have made a small program with three tasks. Task 1 opens and closes the grabber. Task 2 raises and lowers the lift. Task 3 does both at the same time. To explain how the broadcast works, I will look at task 1 in detail. When the main program gets to the my block task 1, task 1 is executed. The first command is to execute the my block grabber. This first sets the variable grabber degrees to 180 and then starts the grabber broadcast. The broadcast turns motor E for the 180 degrees originally specified in the grabber my block. This opens the grabber. Task 1 waits 1 second to give the grabber time to open before moving on to the next command, which is to close the grabber. Using broadcasts in this way, you can move the grabber and the lift and drive the robot all at the same time. Well, that completes my look at gears for grabbers and lifts. The main thing to remember is that to increase the strength, you need to have small gears driving larger gears. The other way around, you increase the speed and reduce the strength. I will attach a playlist which has some videos that you may find interesting. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Hope to see you in the next video.